This meeting is being recorded. I'm going to turn the time over to you, David. Awesome. Happy, happy, happy Wednesday. We're, we're halfway through the week, and I have things that I would love to talk about and giving you all an update on my tiny toolkit, which I've been taking for the last couple of weeks out on service calls, and I think I finally found my perfect kit. So I'm excited to kind of explain that and talk a little bit about that. Looks like Joel's ready to go on his piano. He's going to demonstrate some tuning. This is perfect. This is perfect. <laughs> now, Stacy, before we get started, did you have any kind of questions from the group that have that have emailed questions? If not, that's I, totally fine. No, I do. I have questions. All right. Do you want to do those first since it's our? Yeah, let's community? start with that because sometimes I get on a roll and I just like start. Blah, 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 right. blah, blah, blah. And I got fun ones. Okay, you ready? Great. All right. I'm gonna share my screen so we can see what I'm showing. Are you ready? Okay. This is the first question. Can you hey. all see it? Okay. Yeah. Ooh, grand piano action won't come up. Looks like a screw from yeah. one of the legs. Ooh. What do you think? Mm. Yeah, so a lot of times, if I'm, if I, I'm just trying to think. So, is this a view of somebody's lifting the key bed and we yes. have a seat in there? Is that what it is? Okay, it, it, it's my Steinway, and you can see the screw. It's not in focus because you, yep. it's focusing on the on the piano, but uh, it's stuck there. And I'm thinking maybe it's from the mover that over tightened the screw into the yep. key bed and I don't want to unscrew it and have the piano fall on my head. Yeah. But will that happen? What year's, what year's the, uh, the Steinway, Robert? 1923. Okay. Okay. So does it have a, um, a locking mechanism, like a rotating lock plate and the two screws, or is it just one screw on each side? That would be my question. It's got one big screw on each side. Okay. So <laughs> what happens usually with the Steinways is you remove those screws and then inside the leg itself is a kind of a metal to metal locking system. You're going to be just fine going ahead and removing with a big old fat flathead screwdriver, that one screw, take it to the grinder and go ahead and grind quarter inch off and you'll be set. Okay. Is the bed messed up it won't really affect your sound or anything nope nope a lot of times what happens is the screws will get messed up mixed up so it may be that you have a tail leg screw that somebody has moved over into that what looks like the front right hand corner you know or um leg so a lot of times that can happen okay I was so excited to get the action out. I thought, yes, I'm going to work yeah. on it. And then it got stuck. I thought, what now? Uh, <laughs> As technicians, that seems to happen. It's just like, great. I'm right here. I'm ready to go. And I did this. And then something else will happen. Yeah, it's it got worse as the week progressed. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is this is a safe space for us to just vent and be like, wow, that happened. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. life. It is. Okay, let's scoot this up a little bit. So All right, so we got a damper guide okay. rail. Yes. Oh, no, 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 that's not a damper guide rail. That's no. a in it. No. Okay. My mistake was removing this, this board. How do you get yeah. it back on? You want to know how? This Burn is it. this is a pain. Um, this is just a pain. What you're going to have to do is start on one side. This is the only, and, and if anybody has done this before, um, I've done this one time. I made the mistake if I just like popped that off and I'm like, shoot, I have 88 little fingers that somehow have to get back. And what I had to do was literally just start at one end and kind of slowly put them in from one side and then carefully just kind of putting them into place, slowly lowering it down as each of them are getting in. in. And then what you can do is remove one of the damper heads. Hold on just a second. This yeah, you've trip. got that in the book, in the lesson to remove a damper head. That's in the course. But I was thinking the wrong kind of action. So I just popped that board off, 
and I wrapped a string around it, popped it out easy. And then I thought, I'm going to just pop this action back in, put this board on. I put the keys on and it was a fail. This, I spent two hours today doing this. And then I just told the lady, I said, well, yeah, my takeaway was not tune action, tune spinach. Yes. Work on them. No. Yep. No, I hear you, Robert. So I did that before. This is one of those one timers. You, you're going to do it once. I'm sure anybody here that's worked on pianos has a list of one timers, whether it's pulling out the grand action and snapping a hammer, whether it's, you know, whatever else have you. So just chalk this up. This is an investment in your learning. <laughs> well, I had the action back on the table. And so I need to put that on before I put the action back in. You need to, yes, you need to put the action. Well, no. Because I tried to put the action back in and then put this board on top, but keeping all the little stickers okay, on here's top what of you the need capstans, it was, it was crazy. Okay, so right now you have... You have the, you have your, your, your actions on a bench, right? Correct. And then you have those stickers folded downwards, correct? Yes. So what you're going to do is go ahead and put, you know, you can do it outside the panel. That's totally fine. You're going to put your stickers, start putting them in there. And as soon as you get the first one in there, remove, go ahead and remove one of those damper heads, pull it off of this and screw it on top of that first one so it doesn't pop out. Okay. And just slowly work your way through. That's what I would do. And then once you have it down, go ahead and do another damper head for the other side, fold it upwards, get everything in the piano. That's what I Tell would me do. A follow-up question on the pedal rods. You know, does the action need to be all the way back in before I put those pedal rods? Because they're a little tricky. It's a, it's a, not a Wurlitzer. Uh, ball yeah, I, I usually, yeah, I'll have the action all the way in and I'll have my little Cyclops light thing and I'm just in there and I'm like trying to feed it through and it's just, yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so deflating coming home, I was like, oh, this poor lady. Uh, that's okay. I'm only charging her the bridal straps. So it's on me. <laughs> <laughs> all right robert been, explain this last one with your strings okay. right there in the middle I, I meant to put an arrow on it that's it this one yeah it's like i didn't unwind the pin far enough and i i finally got it on there the frustrating part is just getting the becket through there yeah. but, uh i i wound it hopefully that will hold but i'm pretty close i mean those other I don't know. Give me your thoughts on that. Is that pin in too far? I got it in tune. It could still go in some more, but. No, uh, are we talking about the one with the, uh, the, the Stacy's cursor is on? Yep. That looks beautiful. The only thing I would do is get your needle nose pliers and maybe uh, uh, use them and clamp them down to push that Beckett in a little bit more. Okay. That's, but I think that looks pretty good. It's maybe a little close to the plate, but it's hard for me to tell from this angle. Okay, Dylan, now what, what do you, you think? think? Yeah, the bucket <laughs> looks good, right? It looks pretty good. I think, yeah, just push it. I think I totally agree. I'm actually yeah, really I impressed. Good. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, good easy. job, Robert. Okay, I'm going to just tell these ones because I have a few more, but they're more, no pictures. So. <laughs> so, right. yeah. Okay, someone's having damper issues. They said they are, oh, and she's not here, but she, she wanted us to still ask the question because she's sure. going to watch it later. <laughs> so, okay. She got a piano. And it looks like there was a bunch of sweet tart wrappers in it, but she pushed the action back in and it's not sitting properly. Okay. Um, she said the issue is um, she can't tune it because when you hit a key, it just dampers on forever. I guess it's just a damper issue. She so this says is a grand it, piano? It was, this is a grand piano. Say, maybe I need to get more information. It's kind of a, oh, oh, Yamaha baby grand. Okay. But no, it's an upright. She's got both. Upright okay, when you so that's, the key, it sustains forever without the pedal. Being 
Okay, so the things you would do first and foremost, <coughs> you go ahead and put the action back, right? You're the make sure the pedals and the pedal rods are disconnected. Make sure that those are gone. That's we'd want to take out any things from these equations. So put the action back in, make sure there's no pedal rods and that nothing's attached. The next thing you're gonna do is look and see if all your damper, you know, by cords, tri cords, the wedges, the flat felt, they're all touching correctly. From there, you can go ahead and install the pedal rods, making sure there's a little bit of slop to them, lost motion, and make sure that those pedal rods aren't holding those dampers up. If that hasn't solved it, let us know, and we can talk about it on Friday. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, dampers are one of the questions we get a lot from customers, damper issues. Yeah. So that's, yep. that's something good to know. Okay, yeah. replacing balance rail pin bushings for wobbly keys is there any kind of shim option that can be inserted or is this just kind of a is what it is needs to be replaced kind of situation so um there's so if we're so if i'm understanding we're right we have sloppy uh, uh uh key bushings basically the keys are wiggling too far one way or the other what you can do in a situation where the customer doesn't want to pay any money it's kind of a band-aid fix and right here you have that front rail pin and it's oval shaped so if you wanted to you can go ahead and pivot that pin ever so slightly just like my hand this is the this is like the top view of that pin if you pivot it a little bit it takes up more of that space inside that key that's not a great long-term fix but that's definitely a fix that you can do. And I've done that so many times where I'm like, hey, Mrs. Smith, do you want to spend $500 and get new key bushings and everything? No. Do you want me to fix this in five minutes for free? Yes, do that. <laughs> so that's that's typically what happens. Oh, that's perfect. Yes. And then a voicing question. Um, okay. Someone wants the, the hammers to soften in the mid-range. Okay. And then, then there goes into some voicing. Um, I know you can stand them lightly. What's the best grip to use? That would actually make it brighter, I would think. But he said he's also seen techs use hypodermic needle bottles with acetone fabric softener yep. and injecting that above the strike point. But yeah, anyway, just some just some voicing voicing questions on how to. Yeah. Um... Typically, when I'm voicing down. I'm sticking to three key or core voicing processes. I'm doing soft pedal voicing. I'm doing uh, angel shot voicing. What else am I doing? I'm doing one more. Angel shot. There's three of them. Yeah, and then I'm actually going and doing more, uh, uh, bringing, going up towards the center. So let me show you. I'll get. Let's do this. I'm trying to think if I have any good tools to kind of show you. So the first thing that you want to do uh, is when it comes to voicing, tread lightly. I think that's the thing that I want to explain to you is is start out slow. So let's just say we're on a, a grand piano. It's easy to kind of demonstrate. When you do soft pedal voicing, that means you're looking at the hammers where it's hitting the strings. And a lot of times there's some kind of a little indentation. And what you're doing is you're doing a vertical poke in right at the strike point in between those string grooves or those indentations. That's soft pedal voicing. It's actually breaking up the density of the felt overall without changing that exact point of contact. The next thing is called angel shot voicing. And that is with that same, uh, uh, looking at those same indentations, I'm taking this voicing tool, pretending it's not an Allen wrench, and I'm going kind of at this angle downwards, right at the end of that, where I see that indentation on the string, uh, right where the string is touching, but I'm on that very back end. So it's cutting out some of the punch, but I still have the power overall. And I'll do that in various ways. If that still hasn't do it, done anything, if this is a Young Chang Samic, it's so bright, I'll start to go ahead and with a, with a single vo needle voicing tool, 
start to go in all over the hammer and see what kind of things I can do and break up that density. But more, that's the last thing. So one, two, three, soft pedal, angel shot, and then more of a all around string. Got as it. far as going and voicing the, yes, you can um, by, by, by surfacing the hammers. I usually use a 80 to 100 grit sandpaper that removes those grooves that have impacted and nine times out of 10, especially when you're going with a coarse grit like that, it will soften the overall sound. If you want to add punch, if you want to harden those hammers, uh, you'd obviously use like acetone, uh, lacquer, um, and some other different procedures. I've heard of people using like fabric softener. I've heard of people using like pro felt and just doing that. I've never done it. I've just found these other ways have worked for me. Great. Thank you. And then Joel, you had a damper question. Do you want to ask yeah. that? You, yeah, go for it. Okay. So I have this piano I'm working on, not my piano. It's at somebody's house. It has a, um, the bottom octave isn't responding to the uh, sustain pedal. Grand or upright? Uh, upright. Upright piano, and we're talking about the low, the last lowest octave, correct? Yes. And it's not responding. Um, so you press down on the note, and the dampers don't uh, lift. Is that correct? They they lift. They work fine as long as the um, pedal's not being used. But if I hold down the pedal, it doesn't. They don't respond to the pedal. They're not lifting with the pedal being moved. Yeah. It's odd that there's only a small handful of them doing that. When you play those, the handful of notes just at a normal blow, are they dampening fine? Yeah. Weird. <laughs> um, this is kind of weird. It was like the. Yeah, um... very weird. Um, so typically, what that would be. And have you looked in there and seen when you go ahead and push that damper pedal down, all the other dampers are lifting, and but the bass right there is not lifting? That would yeah, be my I mean, first thing. When, when I hit the pedal, the damper lifts. I mean, but when I hit not, the key, the damper lifts, but when I hit the pedal, the damper doesn't lift. Yeah, so what I'm saying is when you're using that damper pedal yeah. and you see all of those dampers lifting, are right. you saying that the far left are not lifting at all? Correct. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So it may, I've had this happen before. The damper lift rod is held in place and back there by little arms that have a little uh, bracket. Okay. Sometimes those arms can break. Sometimes the felt that is inside of that mechanism can get removed, in which case you have this flopping kind of damper a rod, and that can cause what you're talking about. So oh, okay. I, would, I would look into that, remove the action, see if that rod's in place, see if you can go ahead and just with your, your finger, move that damper uh, lift rod and see if you can get it all to move that way. But that's an interesting thing. That's a weird one. And pick a video if you're there next. Okay. We'd love to see it. All right. Thanks. Any other questions, anyone? That's all I had for, I think that's all I had. Uh, I, I have a question. Cool. I got a question. Um, yeah, it's sure. more uh, considered uh, with uh, modern uh, piano player systems. Um, I don't know if maybe one of you guys have seen it. Uh, the old player disc, disc systems with the floppy drives. Have you seen anybody put a USB emulator into the floppy drive? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I've not seen it. I'm not saying that that hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. um, has anybody here uh, that maybe works with piano stores seen anything like that? I've just I've just never seen that. Um yeah, are you it's interesting. Add on for it. Yeah, because I did see there's a company somewhere, I don't know, somewhere in Europe or something. They make yeah. an emulator. Yeah, you just pull out the floppy drive itself from the 
the console and then you can put in a USB emulator and then plug in your USB with the correct format and then it'll work with the player system because there's a couple clients we have that have the older floppy disk uh, players and of course they don't want to spend five to eight thousand to get a new player system installed uh, and uh, I'm just trying to see if anybody's had experience with it to see if we can offer that um, I might just try yeah, to do I have it anyway. I would try. Let me. Oh, have you tried Piano Stream? Piano that, Stream. I've, I've heard of it. Um, that actually you can do that for really inexpensive. I oh, mm -hmm. see, I have it on my phone. <laughs> I'll oh, send. Yeah. I'll put it in the chat. That's not yeah. helping. But um, there <laughs> there are some really inexpensive options where you can just like like plug get a cable and it'll plug to a more um advanced device so you can do more things with it i i'll put those yes. in the links because there that is a thing mm -hmm. yeah and that's the thing we're trying to offer that uh the dealers we use they have a lot of player systems installed on their pianos but they're usually the older systems and yeah. uh you know down here the only other dealer we have they're just always trying to upsell people on getting new systems installed which is fine i guess but we're just trying to offer something that's just less uh less expensive and um you know see what happens yeah that's good yeah i'll put that in the chat i'll find those links because i've done it before and it's it costs like hardly anything except for the app i mean yeah there was an yeah. app that was it so um i'll i'll put that in the the chat it's great awesome thank you thank you did it look like that somebody shared something during uh, a file during <laughs> that yes andy Okay, wait, I gotta show you this. Let me download the picture. Yeah, he's gonna just try to stump me with oh something. Oh my gosh, I this it. is, I'm so excited to share this. Let me, sh let me share. Okay, uh, there we go. Check this out. There's the first one. Wow. It's looking good. What, wait, is that you your little, is that your PTA book there, Andy? Yes, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> I love it. So what have you been doing to this guy? Uh, so this is the old family piano. It's like a 50-year-old Wurlitzer, and it needs everything done. Oh, wow. It, uh, probably the first most obvious thing is these balance rail pins need polished. Uh-huh. And I think we went over that a while back. Was it Brasso yeah. you use on those to polish them up? Yeah, Brasso or another co a product called Fritz, I think okay. it's called. Yeah. Fritz, yeah. yeah. And still Fritz, polished. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, wow. So yeah, uh, pulling this thing apart, and so this is going to be my the bulk of my training is rebuilding this whole thing. And this is so good. Yeah, this is so. This is a great piano to work on. That uh, that's interesting. If you look at the, uh, it looks like it has a mahogany on the left hand side of that of that soundboard, and then a spruce on the right. That's interesting. Uh, that's uh, cool. Why do I want to think that's a veneer? I'd have to go back and look at it, but. Yeah, a lot of times that right there's just this decorative piece. Yeah. Uh, the now, uh, Andy, did it have a, a kind of a unique scissor system to for that fall board? That. Yes. Yes. And yeah, so, those are weird, right? Yeah, those are kind of yeah. complicated. Yeah. Yeah, because that was well, that was actually yeah, well, that was what the uh, key cover uh, was was yep. screwed to. Um, so the first question I've got, I, I pulled this action out a while back. Put it back in when i started tuning it i've noticed that the dampers um in some sections don't actually dampen the keys and like the whole action's vibrating and we found a little piece of wood that actually is right here yep it doesn't and it's pine it doesn't like match anything in the piano i wonder if this was like a wedge that a previous technician had put in there to um hold the action like closer to the to the uh, uh to the strings <sighs> it it, it it could be. It's more likely, and I'm. I do notice that uh, with this piano, the design of it was, if I'm not mistaken, you would go ahead and put the action in place, and they had these really long screws with the little uh, spacer. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. My question to you is, Andy, is did you by chance label the spacers on which one goes where? Not the first time. You you'd mentioned okay. this to me before, and I I I've labeled them, but I. There's yep. one with hex head, and you know which where that one goes. That one's on the far right, but yep. the three I may have mixed them up. So when I've had issues with that same, and the reason I'm bringing it up is when I've had issues with the dampening like that, it's because I didn't put them in the right order. Yeah, so they didn't get in the same grooves. Yep. 
Okay. Exactly. So th so that they're not in the, you know, how the, so basically those dampers are sitting too far back and because yeah. I have the wrong spacer. So if I put the right spacer in, they're yeah. cl closer towards it and then it works. Yeah. That's okay. what my guess would be. Right. A lot of times also, I will jostle the action around more than I realize, specifically the damper felt. So mm -hmm. when I put it back, I don't realize, oh, shoot, all the wedges aren't quite sitting correctly. I need to push them in the proper yeah. way. Yeah, I have That's noticed that big one. it was sort of, when I put it back in initially, it was off to the left or right. And I had to jig a little, little bit to get them to, to hit the oh. base strings. How, how do you feel about it so far? Are you having fun with it? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm still working a, a pretty hectic stressful. day job, so time's limited, but, um, I, I think this is the perfect learning, learning, learning tool right here. I think you're right. My toolkit, y'all, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just, I showed it to you the other, you know, a couple weeks ago. It's the most petite little thing. And it kind of inspired me to just simplify everything and just slow down. And so when you have a toolkit like this, that's smaller, it forces you to do everything slower. It forces you to make sure that your tools are in the right order so that you can roll them the correct way and tighten them down so that there's enough room to fit them in here. And so I kind of have a challenge to you all, and that is a more actually more of a question. Do you have more of a difficult time slowing down or more of a difficult time needing to do things faster? So this is kind of the tortoise or the hare. And I'm just curious for each of you if if you've noticed in your in what you're doing that, wow, I really need to slow down, or wow, I really need to speed up because I'm overthinking it. So I'm curious what your thoughts are on that. My vice is putting the tools away correctly when I'm done. Yeah. I have that hour and a half time in my head, you know, don't spend two hours at their house. So. Yep. 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 I overthink. Yeah. Go ahead. No, it's okay. I, I tend to overthink. I need to speed up, but at the same time, uh pay more attention especially when putting things back that takes longer yeah. than taking it off and i tend to get careless in where what goes where yeah yeah because it's it's kind of like uh what joel was saying is like sometimes you feel sometimes i feel the the clock ticking and i'm like okay i gotta get out of here i throw my tools back in there that's that's my what i tend to do just going to throw it back in there. I literally started to do that this morning with an appointment Then I'm like, why am I, why am I rushing this? Just take a deep breath, put the things back together and you'll be set. Um, because I think when you slow down for those that are need to slow down, you end up appreciating the craft that that much more. And you're just, you're not, it's not just rushing through. It's, it's, it's having fun with it as you go. And y'all just so you know, I don't know, how long you you've all been working on pianos, but it gets better. It gets better with age. It gets better as you get more comfortable, as you get more experience, as you, as you have more wins and less losses, it's just, you're going to have more fun with it. So just like embrace that process. And in that, I kind of wanted to bring up a, a thought that I've been having lately. And it's kind of different than what I've had in the past. In the past, when it comes to spending money on your craft, on the work, I've been like, just dip your toe into the shallow end. Just see if you like it. Just try it. Make things work. I'm actually rethinking some of that. Just because we've been creating more ideas and things in education. And one of the things that we want to do is make it break things down into its best, simplest way for people to learn how to work on pianos. And what I was thinking specifically today is the Rayburn Cyber Tuner. Rayburn Cyber Tuner is the most expensive tuning device on the market. And if we, and I was thinking, well, what if we kind of talk to people more about this and we're really plugging it? Is that unfair? Because what if they can't afford it? And then I got to thinking, you know what? The reality is 
what our what we've done as educators, I think fairly well is we've broken things down into its simplest and most helpful ways. And things like the Rayburn Cyber Tuner, like certain other tools, do that really well. You'll pay more for them, but they give you such a leg up and simplifies things that it is worth it. So for instance, the entry level tuning hammers, you can totally start with that, but you are fighting an uphill battle to a point. You know, you can certainly start with the cheaper or free piano tuning apps, but you are, you're not going to progress like you, you can. And Andy, you kind of, Barla, you kind of inspired some of this um, because you kind of, <laughs> Andy just went for it. He's like, I'm getting this. I'm getting this. What's the best? I'm doing this. And I, I'm th I've been thinking about that and how we as educators need to showcase the products, whether they're expensive or not expensive, that will give our students the most help. Whether they choose to get those things or not is up to them, but we can at least show this is why we choose it. It's not because it has a great logo. It's because it literally simplifies your life. So... That's kind of my two cents. That's from where I'm at right now, but y'all can you all can disagree. I've, That's fine. I've been lucky enough to have a couple of mentors here in town helping me. Uh, yeah. In community, and all of them said, get rid of your sixty dollar Amazon tuning hammer and get, yeah. get something good sooner rather than later. Yeah. So that's been the advice I've got is like get what you need. Get front. what you need. Yeah. It, it's a business investment. So it is. It is a business investment and what we do, you know, it does take a while to build up your client, but it is lucrative. And once you buy it, you have it forever. It's not like your tuning hair is going to go bad. Yeah, the uh, my mentor always said for tuning, he's like, Victor, you're here fine. It's going to be easy to, to hear to hear the beats and everything. He's like, the hardest thing about tuning is your hammer technique, is getting the, the pin to do what you want. And so, uh, yeah, I found that the the we started off with the Amazon tuning lever, not very yeah. great. And then I used my dad's old lever a little bit better. Then I used one in the kit and still had to do more adjustments with the tips and the head. And then finally, now that we use Randy's, it's just that whole we don't have to worry about is yeah. it is it the hammer or is it us? Yes. Now I know I'm just not a good tuner. <laughs> yeah. Now I know it's just me. Yeah. Yeah, that is a huge, that is huge. I didn't even think about that or bring yeah. that up, but the fact that you can eliminate things so yeah. that you can address the issue. Yep, yeah. And as soon as uh, Ramsey's got his first, and I remember the first day he got it, we went over, we were on a grand piano, and I used it, and I was like, this is... I was like, this is it. Like, I know exactly what I'm doing now. And I know it's it's not the hammer. It's just me if I'm messing up now. Yeah. I only, I only have myself to blame, so... Yeah. The same thing went was for me. I used to use the sat three off and on. And I'm like, I just don't like this. This is a, and when I went to the cyber ear, it was like mind blown. I mean, this was 15, whatever years ago, but it was like game changer. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh. So I thought I would show you something that is helping me, mm -hmm. um, with the, uh, the bellows and the uh, the lower action for the um, player unit, and it took me a long time to do this. But let me see if I can make it. There's my feet. Okay. Do you see how I drew out the entire uh, bellows section down there? Wow. And I put holes in the cardboard so that when I took the screw out. I put it into the cardboard in the exact position where it yes. to go back in. And this has been helping me um, with all of my pieces of my piano. It's like when you do the action and you have to take it apart and you yeah. label them all so you know exactly where they go back in. But this is what I'm doing for the bellows section as well. And wow. I'll do it when I get into the upper action on the player is everything goes into its proper hole so it you're not cross threading because you got the wrong yes. screw in that hole. So just a note, just something I, I thought I would share. Um, and, and for those that maybe, you know, need a little bit of help with, with that kind of organization, but I don't think yeah. I'm going to be able to do the player unit unless I'm really organized. Oh, a hundred percent. 
So this is where I'm going with this right now. And every, I'm spending more time on the organization than I am actually on the unit itself, but that's okay. That's okay. Because it will, it will come back to bite me if I don't later. Yep. Oh yeah. Now you didn't freehand those lines. You got to have straight lines there. Well, I used a, um, yeah, I, I, I used a, I, I used a square. Okay, That's come good. on. I used a square. I don't, <laughs> I don't do things by hand that much anymore. Um, but I, I just, I wanted to make it really yeah. readable so that if I come back and I don't need these screws for another six months, I know where they go. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, it's beautiful. Like you could almost frame it when you're done. <laughs> I'll so send it cool to you, David. Thing. You can do that. Yeah. That is so <laughs> yeah. smart. That is so smart. We used to use cardboard and like draw the plate, like draw the, the whole frame and where the bolts were like, do the same thing, but yours is way prettier than how I used to do it in the rebuild shop. But because you need to know which one goes where exactly. You don't, we, I've seen the mistake where everyone throws everything in a box and it's just like, yeah. how did yeah. you do it, David? How did you organize it when you did rebuilds with all those little screws and parts and things? Did you do the, like the cardboard theme? Like, were you like, like, how did you do it? So, as you, yes, that's how I did it. <laughs> as you grow your companies, if you, if you have multiple technicians and stuff like that, you can't always ensure that everybody's doing the, the same thing. So yes, I used to do that. No, we didn't do that. <laughs> we should have done that. So yes, Janice, do that. That's great. Hold on, let me make sure my car's not been towed. <laughs> that would not be awesome. <laughs> I've never seen a car get towed right here. Yeah, sure enough, some car's getting towed. Next week, I'm hoping, I'm going to probably be in Phoenix all week, and I, I'm twisting Mark's arm to see if we can do Mondays with Mark Perney, or Monday, this upcoming Monday with Mark Perney at his uh, space. He could show, it's going to smell like 3D printing and all this stuff, but we can go ahead and just get an inside scoop on the man creating all the Supply 88 tools. I would like to know what's his favorite tool. What's the hardest tool to make? What is the biggest value? What is he excited about? He's coming out with better, like new tuning hammers as well. In theory, he's making me one. Maybe he'll surprise me with it. But that might be happening next week since I'm already going to be in Phoenix. He's out in Phoenix and I would love to visit with him and Don, his wife. They are the sweetest people and they're amazing. So hoping to get more of a, uh, more tool stuff and we can do tool talk with mark on monday or wednesday depending on what he's available well the pt some... meeting is tuesday night what'd you say the ptg meeting the guild meeting is tuesday night down in phoenix oh i'll have to go to that i would like to go to it uh but i don't know what the snow situation is going to be because you don't want to come up the hill if it's snow if it's raining yeah. in phoenix you're going to hit ice somewhere all along the way to get back to Flagstaff. So that's, uh, that's uh, right. you know, the, the weather might keep me out of it. But I'm trying to get a ride down there. Um, I talked to a piano technician up here that goes to the meetings. He's the librarian down there, actually. And uh, I'm hoping to hitch a ride with him on Tuesday. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be a blast. Was somebody else mentioning something when? Oh, oh you're talking about. Don or the Pernies. I bought Dan some wire tires huh? and uh, they emailed me. They're like, we saw you're in Arizona. We want to send you people because <laughs> they get calls for my area too sometimes apparently. Wow. So that's they're awesome. pretty nice as far as I've seen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, the Phoenix chapter, as I hear, is a pretty good chapter. Um, every chapter is a little bit different, but I'm amazed at how you all are, a lot of you are going to your chapter meetings and just having great success with it. And people are really great. Um, Dylan, you're down in the Eugene chapter, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there you are. We have the meeting here in the store once a month. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Now, is Dana a, a technician down in Eugene? Dana Christensen? 
Yeah, yeah. Piano, piano with Dan, Dana Piano or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. In fact, she she wasn't at the last one, but she was at the one before that. I got okay. her. Yeah. I just met her for the first time. Yeah. I just met her for the first time because I was just at the Portland chapter meeting on Monday and she was there. I guess she's the treasurer. So, yeah, it's just it's an interesting everything is changing and it's very it's just way more welcoming than it's i feel like it's it's been for a long time which is awesome so people are really wanting to support the text because again there's there's a lot of work to go around we have on the docket coming up we're going to be doing the pitch raises and then also uh we're going to be doing tuning the piano from start to finish so it'll be literally, we'll, we'll say hi to everybody and be like, hey, David's tuning. We're starting the clock and we're just going to start tuning. I'm trying to figure out if there's a way, I think there is, for me to have a multi-view where you're seeing on one screen, like the actual device, the, the cyber tuner. So it's on one screen, it's the actual file that's being created while I'm doing it. Yeah, and then another view, go ahead. You can do that with Zoom. Yeah, but I thought not, I'm, I want it. Are you saying that I can basically plug my cyber tuner into the computer and it can see the interface? I, th I think I if you know. join as, I think if you join as yourself again on your iPad or whatever, and then uh -huh. screen share your iPad. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I'd like to do that so that you can see yeah. what's happening because I've kind of, I think I've narrowed down really the thing to teach in piano tuning comes to three things. And I think Victor, you named one of them is actually, you know, moving the tuning pin or, you know, I think that there's three things. It's hearing the sound that your journey to becoming a great piano tuner comes in three main phases. First is knowing what to hear. Second is getting your body to be able to move the pin to get it there. And third getting the ability to make it stay. Those are the three core principles, I think, that really surround piano tuning. What are you listening for? That takes a while. And that takes, when we're working with students, when we're working with brand new apprentices, is this right? And we're like, uh, wah, wah, wah. no, it's not. But it takes a while to sometimes learn that. So then they're like, okay, great, I can hear it. And then they're like, they go to move the pin and they're just like crazy. So learning that, and then finally, how to set the pin. Set it, and so that you're 100%, this isn't moving. And so as we talk and communicate about piano tuning, we're probably gonna start honing in on some of these core principles and just laying them out like that. But I'm excited to tune. I tuned today, and it took me way longer, and I'm sore, because it was a Steinway console. Just so you know, Steinway consoles and Mason and Hamlin's and Charles Walter. What do all three of those pianos have in common? Charles Walter, Mason and Hamlin, Steinway. Anybody guess? They're American. They're but... American. Yeah. <laughs> They're American. And so I think, I, I think it's the amount of glue. I think it's the amount of glue in those pin blocks. Just is so, I don't know what it is, but it just worked me. So I'll get a couple more tunings back under my belt or else it'll look pretty unimpressive to watch me tune. <laughs> I have a quick follow-up question because I just got my hammer in new. But what would you put on this tip of 30 millimeter, 40? And what, what size do most of you, just kind of show of hands. Yeah. Is your standard right. size. This is mine. Mine's quite a bit, mine has quite a bit of height because I, I like to have it clear. I like to have it clear everything. So that's me. That's, I mean, just so you, this is probably. What's your tip? Is that a 30 millimeter tip? Probably. When you say, I'm thinking. Did you that... order it from Supply 88 by 20, 30, or 40? Oh, wait, you have a Supply 88 hammer? Yeah, this is a Kestrel. Just came oh, in. Let's, let's see the, get... uh, you got to show this off, Robert. Just going kind of just willy nilly. That's cool. Yes. So it took a while, but I just want to make sure I get the right tip. I think I have a 30 from what I'm using now, which is just the Amazon, yeah. you know, something on Amazon. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the angle. 
um, and everything. So, well, well the angle is preset in this yeah. 15 degree, I think, but it's 15 degree. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I I don't know. I've never used a Fujin hammer, which is this is kind of similar to that Fuyon. Um, but I would say the I'm personally would want something at least 35 to 40. That's me. Okay. But my brother Adam is not that way. He's like, no, I want it to be barely, you know, I want it to be right on the pin. And I'm like, to each their own. So you, you won't go wrong. Okay. Yeah, the closer I can get, I'm kind of like that. And the closer I can get down there, I guess I yeah. feel like the less room for error. Totally. Totally. Less and flag so I think if, yeah, go ahead and, and I would start with it closer because then you're not going to be flag pulling as much, which, you know, we, you've talked about in the past, like, hey, I'm struggling with some flag pulling, which everybody does. So, yeah, the closer you get down in there, that'll be the better. Oh, I'm so curious to see how you like that. Yeah, I can't wait to get the tip in. Check that out. That looks good. It's Denver piano tune. Piano tuning of Denver. Boy, look at that thing. It's beautiful. I love it. I love looking at that. I love everything about it. And here's another one. He had AI. Wait, wait who did that one? Who did that one? That's great. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That, that I just asked the Microsoft AI to make me a logo for Highland Piano Service, and that's what it came up with. So I make it an actual human graphic designer to to clean that one up a little bit. We don't we don't have like snow capped mountains around here. It's more yeah. We're in Appalachia, so it's more you know Rolling Hill type oh, thing. That's awesome. Hey, Stacy. Look at the Andes doing their logos. <laughs> Look at this, Stacy. Do you remember that joking? Uh, 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 logo thing that masha made for us it was like an ai with the muscle dude and the tuning hammer you remember that one pull that up maybe i didn't show that to you i, have, I don't think you showed it to me all right i'll see I've if i can AI find it really quick some weird pictures though <laughs> the yeah. website, i had some ai images but they they would oh the the piano moving ones were the weirdest they were creepy. <laughs> what, what do you mean they like, do you remember I showed you? They had they generated images of guys moving pianos, but they like didn't have heads, or some of them were like floating. And I'm like, <laughs> it's just really, it was really messed up. I wish I still had them to show. Well, I might, but they were they were pretty odd. <clears throat> they were odd. Do you yeah. have that one that Masha got or no? I'm gonna have to go find it because it was like this adventurer piano tuner thing that looked like indiana jones and uh it was awesome so i was like i'll have to find that my kids would do weird they they take over my computer and put weird screenshots on of weird <laughs> weird stuff all the time i open my computer i'm like what so anyway that's so fun <laughs> how many tunings uh wait it looks like uh Pima simpson oh that's a good one we use stripe that's stripe works well with gazelle that's mainly mm -hmm. uh, but um a lot of people still use square a lot of people yeah. use venmo now i i still know some techs that solely are using venmo which is i'm like whoa but the, i mean yeah um quickbooks i have i have some techs use quickbook but that is so expensive there are better alternate their their fees are crazy high um but do you guys accept yeah. the do you guys, will you guys accept checks or cash or things like that? We discourage okay. it because of the admin work, added admin work. Mm, okay. Yeah. But literally, what do we have? Like 10 grand in AR for just checks from schools. It's just like, <laughs> uh, adds oh, up. Yeah. And when you have, you know, texts having to send in stuff from other states, it just becomes a little cumbersome, but yeah. Yeah. But Stripe and Square are really good, actually. And the they fees are. are pretty decent. So a uh, question for the group. Um, we're probably going to be adding, we're going to figure out a way to kind of add another portion, a component of what we're doing. And that is going to be strictly for business. And so we have a wide range of, of people and where they're at. And so we have people that are just learning, just like getting into the, field and then we have some people that are thinking about maybe they'll start their own business um and then we have people that are running their own businesses 
So one of the things that we want to do is accommodate everybody. And the reality is one of the things that we ran into with starting, you know, doing PTA is we actually had a lot of business owners not want to send people through our course. Can anybody guess why? Because then they'd start their own businesses. Yeah. They don't go we literally had lessons in it on how to do it. And so that doesn't mean, so what we want to do is make this because we have a lot of people that like they own retail stores, they own their multi-tech and they're like, yeah, I want to start sending them to you guys for training, for mentorship, all that. I don't want you, I, but I only want them learning this. So we're going to be working in the next little bit to create another um, kind of a think tank group. And that's going to be for people that are like, I'm starting my business. We're not going to be talking about technical stuff. We're going to be talking about uh, branding, uh, ex you know, marketing, website design, um, all of that type of a thing in that group. Um, just so you know that when we do really launch what we're talking about, we're probably going to have multiple tiers. And so just letting everybody know, because we want to involve you as much as we are, as much as I'm allowed to say right now, I want to say it, there will be multiple tiers. A lot of the people watching these are from other countries and they do not have the ability to chime in and be a part of the more Q and A aspect of what we do. So they're going to be at the more bottom tier. They're going to get access to certain things and not others, but that's okay because they don't need it. Then there's going to be kind of a mid-level tier is what you're kind of doing where we're talking tech. Then we're going to kind of have more of a business class tier to where it's like, hey, I'm running a business. This is a business expense. I need to grow. I need to know what I'm doing wrong. We need to help you set benchmarks and we want to help you know figure that stuff. So just so you all know, that's kind of going to be coming down and that's just for your all information. And you feel free to email Stacy questions about that. But we're going to want to start moving some of the business questions into more of that particular group, just so that it's beneficial for everyone. And we also honor the people that want to send people to us and keep it more to the skills. Well, I thought I had found a, a, a place for my business. Right. Did you see so you thought you did or you did? I, th I thought I did. It's a beautiful <laughs> little shop in Southern uh, Flagstaff, thousand square feet, $2,100 a month plus a, um, utilities, nice. which I could afford. Right. Yeah. It's a historic building, right? The doorways aren't wide enough to put a piano through it. What do you mean? What do you because mean? player pianos are four inches deeper than a normal <sighs> piano. And when they made this building back in, you know, 1800s, they didn't make big doors. They're tiny little doors. And I can't get a piano through it. Oh. I was like, oh, no. I, you know. It's a historic building. Oh, I'm so sad. <laughs> you may, Janice. Janice, here's yeah. what I'm going to recommend for you. Because landlords, I've I've been landlord. I've we will we will part the waters for a good tenant. And they will, no, they won't change a historic building. It it's a historic weird. building. You can't change the can't the change the door. Oh, it's so true. And it it's was, so and true. the price was right, right? Twenty one hundred. Oh. I can afford that, right? For the rest home. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, if it isn't one thing, it's another, right? Oh. Exactly. So I'm yeah. still looking. I went to look at one and there is nothing in the entire plaza. There's not a single business in this plaza. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, what's wrong with this picture, right? The goodwill <laughs> moved out. The church moved out. The vet moved out. They want yeah. $80,000 a year rent plus 13000 a year to take care of the snow removal in the parking lot. So there's a reason why this whole plaza is empty. It's way overpriced. So hey, I'll, I'll remove your snow for like a hundred bucks. <laughs> wow. You know, um, it's just, some of these guys are really crazy. You know, they don't That's get insane. It. The only thing I can think of is they're taking off their taxes as a business loss. Yeah, could be. It could be. But I thought I'd found something this morning and it was beautiful and 
it won't go through. They won't go through the doors because it's too narrow. The doorways. You can't even do ADA accommodations to make um, it work. No. So, so before you say no to it, Janice. Yeah. I've had a lot of success with this type of an issue by having a, move, a piano, professional piano mover just kind of look at it. Because what we've done in the past with this situation is we actually upend it onto the dolly. And if you think about it, what that does is it allows you to, you know, it's wider this way than this way. And you put the dolly instead of it underneath it right here, you go like that with it. So a professional piano mover would be able to tell you. Uh, we don't have any in Flagstaff. Um, <laughs> the fire department. I've already right? tried that, right? I have to use the fireman movers because that's all the best I can do, right? No, but the shallowest um, dimension on the piano would be the front to back, and those are four inches deeper because of the player unit. I'm sorry. So, I'd have to take like the keyboard and the front section off, all yeah. of the legs off in order to get it in. Um, it just there's a, it just tells me that there's something better for you. The universe is I, gonna give you something better. Something's gotta be better around here, right? But anyway, <laughs> I, I all right. found that this morning and I'm a little disheartened, but there's another one for me to call on that's about, oh, half a block further south. Let me, I'm gonna yeah. call them. So we had, before we found this space, multiple spaces we looked at and I thought we found the right one and I loved it. I'm so glad I didn't get that one because we got to make this one exactly what we wanted. Parking's here. We, our landlord's amazing. So just they, we, think of it and it will happen. I'm a big fan of, what do you call that, Stacey? <laughs> Magic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I will see you all on uh, Friday. We'll talk more. Bring your questions if you have anything that comes up. Uh, Robert, I'm curious if you're able to get that screw off of the bottom side. Um, and then if people have ideas uh, about the business class, you know, and things that you specifically really want to make sure we cover and all that kind of stuff, let us know. And also uh, how many people will want to be a part of the business class because it may be that we have – Let's just say we have 20 people here and 19 people still want to be a part of that, in which case we'll have to kind of think about that too. So that's fine. And we're, we're, we're totally cool to pivot. So with that, I'll see you on Wednesday morning. Bye everyone. Have a great day. Bye.